10 on site. So this is the farm stand. Uh, another very important building to the operation is this shed right over here. So if you guys wanna follow me, so this is our tool shed, <laughs> hashtag nonprofit farming. We we're waiting on that building. So this is where we store all of the tools. Um, I'm gonna hop inside here, it's a nice, nice wasp. <sighs> all right, so this is a scuffle hoe, and I'm gonna do a demo um, with this particular tool. This is one of my favorite tools on the entire farm. It's used for weeding. There's a blade on either side. And like I said, we can, we can do a demo. <laughs> of that. Can you give me a, a pitchfork, Fred? Yeah, here's one that's not broken. Oh, it's not broken? Okay, great. Yeah. You're going to do edits, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, we also have our pitchforks in here. All right. So this is a pitchfork. Iconic. Um, and then can you grab me the, the wheel hoe? Thanks. Perfect. All right, and then this is our wheel hoe. This is going to be a fun tool for somebody, all right? So we'll do a demo um, after I show you guys some other stuff. Gosh, you may need to be in charge of that because he did that at steps. Oh, okay, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> no, no for, no He's for, like, I don't want <laughs> But I'll tell you what, high school, young, high school right? students, they love that thing. So whenever they're here, I'm like, oh, yeah, great, here, get on this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, so on this side of the building, we have all of our potting supplies. All right, so this is a term I need everybody to be familiar with. This is a 50 cell flat. This is what we use, mm -hmm. a 50 cell flat. This is what we use to start our transplants in the greenhouse. If you notice on the inside, it's very dirty. Um, so we sanitize these um, before their next use um, to help us reduce the spread of disease and stuff like that. Um, we also have four inch pots. <laughs> so these are our four inch pots it's for larger um, plants that we're going to be transplanting out into the field so everything that is stacked here needs to be sanitized <laughs> um, and the first priority we'll take these over actually the first priority is going to be to get the 50 cell flats sanitized um, because those are the these are the ones that we're going to be using in the fall um, so more important so if we can just come over this way. So the folks who are gonna be sanitizing are gonna be in this general area. So on this side of the farm stand, any sort of cleaning supplies that you would need are either gonna be down on the bottom shelf here on the wire rack. So that's where you would get your bleach. Um, and then also on this table here, uh, we have scrub brushes. And I will get this more organized. So there's a whole crate, there's a whole milk crate filled with different types of scrub brushes. And we have smaller ones for this particular task. Um, <laughs> so this is our access to water. <laughs> it is very important that everybody knows how to operate this, okay? So this handle goes all the way up, straight up and down. It is very important that that is straight up and down, okay? And then this hose, I mean, you'd be surprised. So you just move this lever and it opens it up. You put it back, it closes it up. I show a lot of people how to use that. <laughs> all right, and then when you're complete with it, you want to make sure that that handle is all the way down, all right? About how many people you need for this job? Maybe about 10 or so. Okay. Yeah. Folks that maybe are allergic to stuff or yeah. that don't need to mm -hmm. and, so, and that's why we try to create mm -hmm. tasks that are like different levels of either uh, labor intensity yeah, yeah. or to accommodate those types of needs. So okay. for the demonstration, we're only going to fill one of these wheelbarrows. Um, but uh, when the task is actually happening, all three of these wheelbarrows will be filled with water. So if you could please fill that up. Great. And you're going to fill it up to about here. OK. For this particular task, all three of these wheelbarrows are going to be filled with water. In a perfect world, this wheelbarrow here is going to be in the middle so that we can have students working on either side. Um, and the reason why I would say this wheelbarrow is because this is the wheelbarrow that's going to have some bleach in it for the sanitizing. Um, so I typically just do a dollop, OK? Um, give it a little swirl. And you want to smell 
the water, it should not smell like bleach. Oh. And if it does, it should be very, very faint, okay? That's important. Um, so there's gonna be water in all three of these barrels. And then we are gonna start with the uh, 50 cell flats. Ooh, thank you. So what you would do, thank you, yeah, those are my favorite ones. <laughs> so what we'll do is first you're gonna dunk your uh, 50 cell flat or four inch pot into the water that does not have bleach. So this is just to loosen up any of the debris. Okay, ooh, can somebody please grab me a scrub brush, the one with the white handle and the orange bristles? So loosening up any debris. Some of, sometimes you need to get the scrub brush in there and kind of like clean it out, give it a nice little scrub. Yeah, perfect, thank you. So scrub brush, and you can just get it in there. It is very important to let the students know that we reuse these and they, yeah, because it is very easy to put that brush in there and it goes right through the cell and then, you know, it kind of puts us behind a little bit. Also, you may come across cells, I mean, this one's in really good uh, condition. You may come across flats that have cells that have been crushed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if you find that, please be helpful and just kind of stick your finger in there and like reshape it into a cup. Okay, so your first dunk is into plain water, loosen all of the debris, give it a little scrub. Your second dunk is into the water that has bleach. And it's gonna be this simple, guys. And just have the kids kind of put their fingers into each cell and just get it all out, okay? When they are complete, and these, you'll, you'll, children love like filling this up with so many flats. When they are complete, <laughs> you can put them over on these tables here to dry. Okay, so you can put them on this table here to dry. If it is a terribly windy day, we will create a situation where they don't blow away. And then when they are completely dry, they will be stacked inside each other, okay? And that's why it's important that the cells um, are kind of pushed back out again so that they can like reshape one another when the pressure's on there. Um, and then we'll give you a piece of blue tape, a painter's tape, and you are just on the entire stack, not on every one. You're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna put a piece of blue painter's tape and it's gonna say sanitized and the date. And that way we know that they're ready to be used. Okay. So periodically you may have to change out the water because it's gonna get very dirty. Again, kids love this big splash, lots of mud. Please let them know to wear um, boots, like there are shoes that they can get dirty. I can see if we've got some, uh, some wrap things, disposable ones. Should we get some disposable ones? Most of them are gonna have on tennis shoes. Tennis shoes. So the folks who are gonna be doing this task will we'll likely have very wet feet. Okay, we can get some of those booties, those plastic booties. I sure. They come up to right yeah. about here. Oh, We've used nice. them over like at uh, the hog and okay. the Okay. Gotta keep the feet. Yeah, absolutely. Also, in the event of rain over the weekend, like we are still learning like the lay of our land and we, we get a lot of like sitting water and stuff well, like we'll, that. We have enough enough for everybody. People need to use those. Correct. So harvest crates do not get dumped. Harvest crates get sprayed down with the hose. They get a very good scrubbing to, to loosen up any funk that's in there. And then they get a spray with a light bleach solution, okay? So in a perfect world, this is almost perfect world, uh, all the 6425s are gonna be stacked right here. All the 6413s are gonna be stacked here and all the 6408s. What does that mean to us? Okay, a 6425, the higher the number, it just is an indication of how deep the crate is. So I would imagine for potatoes, because they're small potatoes, uh, we'll probably be using either 13s or 08s. And so these crates need to be sanitized before they are brought out to the harvest. The way that these um, work, there's two different types and I wanna show you guys because I would hate for these to get broken. Okay, so. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to build your crate. And we'll let you know day of how many we need um, sanitized. So the sides go up, okay? And then there is a tab right here that you pull back to have it lock into place. 
So same thing on the other side. There is a uh, crate that has a different manufacturer and it looks like, ah, looks like this. So this particular crate has a, a different system for locking. So you're gonna put the sides up and you see here there's a handle. You're gonna pull that handle up and then lock it into place, okay? When you break these crates down, you will use the same process, okay? You're gonna unlock them and then collapse them. Please do not just force them down. So when your crate is built, We'll have the hose running over here. So it's gonna be very, it's gonna be very wet over here, a lot, very muddy. Yeah. Generally, we'll set them up um, on that picnic table, uh, not picnic, it's not picnic, on the bench. We'll set it up on the bench over here. So we'll just do this in actuality. Okay. So you're gonna set up your crates on the bench here. Yeah, let's get the hose on. All right. Yeah, like this. So you're gonna give your <laughs> you're gonna give your harvest crate a good uh, spray. All right, and then you're gonna come in with your scrub brush, and you're gonna give it a nice good scrub. We are only sanitizing the inside of the crate, so don't worry about the outside. Okay. Once it has a good scrub, you're gonna use this uh, pump here to spray it down with a light bleach solution. Again, <laughs> please, I would like it if an adult maybe did this. So you wanna push down on this pump until it starts to put pressure back on you, okay? So this is, this is pretty pressurized here, it's pushing back on me. When it starts to push back on you, stop. Do not continue to push. And then with this handle here, I'm just gonna come in and give everything a quick spray with a bleach solution. I like systems uh, and like assembly lines. So it's, it's nice to have like one person opening up crates, another person setting them out, a third person spraying them down, maybe two folks with scrub brushes coming in behind them. And then the last person is spraying uh, the bleach solution. It works very nicely that way. Um, so there'll be 12, wheelbar 12 students on wheelbarrows, eight students on pitchforks, um, maybe, you know, three to five on scuffle hoeing, and then I could do another, you know, five, three to five on actually spreading the mulch out over the beds and the plants. So let's come over this way. So first, we'll do the scuffle hoe. Okay, so this is a scuffle hoe. Like I said, one of my favorite tools on the entire farm. Um, there's a blade on either side, it does double duty. And the way that this particular tool works, and we have lots of rock blessings. So just, we know, thank you, we know. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh my God, so much rocks. Um, so the way that this tool works is that you are just gonna run it back and forth like you're vacuuming, okay? And you are gonna get all, lots of, lots of, uh, lots of rock blessings. Yeah. So, this particular tool, the scuffle hoe, will only be used in the beds, okay? Um, students are young folks and they're able-bodied, but, you know, good practice <laughs> is to keep your back as straight as possible when you're doing this particular task. It's very natural for folks to want to go like this, but you do this for an hour, you're going to be in a lot of pain <laughs> when you go home. So notice how um, my right hand is on the top of this tool and then my left hand is uh, down lower and I'm trying to keep my back as straight as possible. I am not bending down into it. I am making the tool work for me. I'm not working for the tool, okay? Uh, the next one is gonna be that wheel. Oh yeah, <laughs> he's like, oh Lord. All right. So this particular wheel hoe is going to be slightly difficult in, in, this, um, in this type of soil because of all the rocks. So we'll just do a quick demo and you can just catch the edge. Yeah, this is going to be hard. So you're going to push 
Be mindful of my bed. You get in my bed, man. <laughs> All right, perfect. That looks great. So, may, may I? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think you okay. can do it. Yeah, right? So, uh, typically, you can just give it a push and pull back to build up some momentum. And this particular tool will only be used in the aisles. So where my feet are is an aisle, okay? On either side of me is a raised bed. It is very important that we keep our feet in the aisles and we do not step into the beds. See this footprint in the bed? That breaks my heart, okay? The soil <laughs> in the beds have been prepared in such a way that it allows the plants to grow much easier, including the weeds. Uh, the soil in the aisles has been driven over, it's been walked on, it is compacted. Every time you step into a bed, you create an environment that is more like this and less like, like this. Easy, to, easy for growing, not so much, okay? Uh, then from there, we are gonna have folks working with the leaf mulch. So we are gonna leaf mulch the bed in its entirety, okay? And the aisles, all right, yeah. Especially because these are melons. Again, for this particular field, I mean, we got watermelons over there. You, you'll likely be doing melons. Uh, they'll be growing across the leaf mulch. And I don't know if any, any of you guys have ever harvested melons before, um, but it's very, not only uh, scary, <laughs> but like a little dangerous to be harvesting melons in like grass that's like, uh, you know, higher than your knee and you can't see where, where Snakes. you're stepping. Yeah. Snakes, yep. can't see where you're stepping, exactly. So again, all of these tasks, you know, we've designed our, or the way that we do them here on the farm work really well as like an assembly line. You know, we divide folks up into different tasks within the actual activity. So you're gonna bring your wheelbarrow to the leaf mulch and we are going to have, uh-huh, yeah, okay, go for it. <laughs> we are going to have students pitchforking the leaf mulch into the wheelbarrow. So you want to get this wheelbarrow as full as possible. So almost, almost falling out when you go to wheel it, okay? Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> almost falling out. Because if you fill your wheelbarrow up only halfway, then you're gonna make a lot more trips than you need to. Awesome. So for demonstration purposes, this is fine. <laughs> okay. So then the person who's in charge of their wheelbarrow, you're gonna pick it up and you're gonna to go to wherever has been weeded. Okay. Like I said, systems. So in a perfect world, we would start with the outside edge, we'd get that all leaf mulch. Then we'd move on into the, into the bed, get that completely mulch. Then we'd move into the aisle. Some kind, sometimes like kids or groups like to get like willy nilly and they're doing all, all sorts of things at once. We got people starting over there and everything's all. What's important to me is that uh, the task gets complete in its entirety, but if it is not complete, it's not so like willy wonka that it makes it like difficult for us to get it done. So like three complete beds is fantastic. Um, but like three half beds hurts me, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so when you get to your area that you are mulching, now all the students, we have, I mean, we have gloves. Gosh, I don't know. We have gloves. We got, we got some gloves. We got Perfect, gloves. okay, so we have gloves on. So for this particular task, I do prefer that everyone is wearing gloves. Sometimes there can be ants, um, you know, in the soil or in the leaf mulch. So the way that this is gonna work is we're gonna have students grabbing the leaf mulch. Look how much leaf mulch is in my hand. And piling it up around the plant. If they need to move the plant, which they may, they can, but just very gently, okay? So I'm very gently lifting the plant up and then placing it back onto the leaf mulch. So I'm gonna keep going a little bit more to give you guys an idea of what it is that I'm looking for. These particular plants will be here all summer. 
uh, all, all summer. And this leaf mulch is threefold for us. First and most importantly, it helps us mitigate the weeds, okay? That is numero uno around here. Second, it keeps the soil nice and cool in the summertime underneath. And third, because this is a new property for us and we just like to have a good practice, good stewardship of the land, um, we will turn this leaf mulch in and it'll add to the organic matter in the soil for us. So I have this plant surrounded, right? When I stick my hand into this leaf mulch all the way down to the soil, my whole hand is almost covered. This leaf mulch at minimum needs to be like four, like four to five inches deep. If it's higher than that, bangerang, go for it, okay? If like people start going crazy and they're like just moving really fast, awesome. But this is how deep it needs to be in order for it to be truly effective. And I'm gonna show you guys uh, an example of really good leaf mulching and then really poor leaf mulching, okay? Sweet. Um, and then there, if there are folks who are doing the aisles, that's super easy. Uh, will you hand me the rake behind you? Great. And then will you just dump this into the, yeah. So if you're doing the aisles, this is nice. So teamwork. I'm helping my team member by pulling the leaves out of the wheelbarrow. And then once the leaves are on the ground, I can just use this rake to spread them out appropriately. So the entirety of this plot needs to be covered in leaves, okay? Uh, all right, groovy. Let's, yes, like, let's go with five. So, and, I'll, and whoever, oh, so it'll likely be me. I will come in at certain air, like throughout the task and like measure, or I can like visually see spaces that are thinner because people are like, oh my God, that's, that's so thick, it's crazy. We walk on this, we wheelbarrow on it, we harvest on it, we drive on it, um, and so it compresses. And not only that, it's decomposing at the same time. So it gets thin, like, it gets thinner every month, thinner, thinner, thinner. thinner. <laughs> so it, it needs to be incredibly thick. Like, so here's, the, here's some, here, I'm gonna show you guys some examples. So this particular uh, area is not complete. Why is it not complete? Because the aisles haven't been done. Yeah, I like you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Look at how thick the leaf mulch is here. It is incredible. It is incredibly thick. I'm still haven't even. So here's the soil. It's almost my whole hand. Okay. There is nothing growing up through this. If we walk down this way. <laughs> <laughs> chemical free farming so this area has been leaf mulched look at the weed pressure in here okay this leaf mulch was not applied thick enough so there will be a task for hand weeding okay and it is very important that you pull the weed out from the root sometimes i've noticed with volunteers, they kind of just like to, you know, rip it, <laughs> and I'm like, and the, and you know, and then the weed's not gone. It's just, it's just trims. So we want to try and get these weeds out from uh, from the root. Again, this is going to be very helpful for us because once the weeds are removed, then we can come in and put more leaf mulch. Um, so we will have uh, five gallon buckets, you know, like pickle buckets. And that's what they're going to put the weeds in. Uh, and then we will compost any debris that is like pulled from the fields and stuff like that. All right, so what do we got here? I got the tools, I got sanitizing crates, sanitizing pots, mulching, uh, well, okay, hand weeding. Uh, I may have some students also um, hand weed the edges of the fields because we can't get to it with the lawnmower. And uh, this is brand new irrigation, like drip tape for us. And I do not want to chop it up with the, with the string trimmer. So I'll likely have them do the edges as well. And here's a, here's a helpful thing. When we're leaf mulching, I, it's very important that we go beyond where the bed is finished so that we have a border 
around the field so that we can mow you know, closer without actually damaging the plant or like any of the uh, irrigation that's right to about here. Yeah, 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 I mean, that's great. All right. Yeah, same thing on, on the sides. So you see like we, we created, the edge of the field is actually here. So we've created an area, but this, you know, has been, has been missed. Um, so this is one of our spring fields and spring is over. Whew, thank God. Um, and we will have a handful of students who will be pulling out plants that are either have been bolted, that are past, that we can no longer harvest. And we're doing this week, uh, we're harvesting all of the cabbage. It's just been so hot, petite cabbages. Um, and so we can have uh, folks, you know, clean up the debris from that as well. But this is a super easy task. This should be, this should be fun. Everybody who comes over here, they're like, ooh, what is that? That's beautiful. What kind of lettuce is that really? It tastes awful. So you're just gonna grab the plant and you're gonna pull it out of the ground. There we go. Yeah? He's been, this is, he's like, I don't wanna leave. They're so happy. Beautiful. You're going to give it a shake and we're going to put all of that debris probably in the back of a pickup truck, <laughs> probably in the back of a pickup truck. And then we may actually have the students like kind of sweep off the fabric too, just so that it's neat and tidy. Um, there's this area here, a little bit more difficult, you know, to figure out where, you know, where stuff is just because of the weed pressure. Okay. But, on either side of me here is kale. This is a beautiful Toscano kale, nice tender leaf. Folks love it. Over here we have a red Russian kale. They're coming what, on a Tuesday? Yeah. Yeah. Might have them harvest kale. It's awfully big. We could do that. So I'll, I'll do, I'll do a harvest demo for the potatoes to kale. Um, and then this here, oh, you guys, yeah, you guys are with the farm bureau. What is it, like lamb's quarter? Is that what it is? Amaranth? I think that one's the amaranth. This one's the lamb's quarter. So what you're going to do for these is you're going to, this is always in there real good. See, I'm a little worried about them pulling this out right. because they may pull out the plants. I think I may prefer for them to just cut them short because that took a lot of soil out. Where's yeah. Shani? Okay. Yeah, we're going to have them cut it out. Okay. Uh, yeah, we can always come back in. I mean, I can't imagine us holding onto this too much longer. Uh, all right. All the way down at the base. Yeah. Thanks, Jan. This is Janny. This is another staff person here on the farm. And she will be, you'll be here next Tuesday, right? She'll be here next Tuesday. Thank you. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Okay. So these are pruners. Okay. It is very important that we get all of our pruners back. Hashtag nonprofit farming. We only have like maybe six. Okay. If y'all got pruners you want to donate, we're happy. We're happy to take them. So you are going to make sure that you are only cutting out weeds. Okay. <laughs> so do a close up of this kale. That's nice. That's, that's a kale plant and do a close up of that kale. Also a uh, kale plant. The definition of a weed is anything that is not supposed to be there. The only thing that's supposed to be in this particular part of the field is kale. So you are going to take your pruners and you're going to get down to the base and you're going to cut that out. Oh, you got it. Yeah, I remember that. Same. So anything that is not kale, and of, of course, you know, grass you can pull, but like these like thick stem, stocky stuff, we're gonna get down to the base and you're just gonna cut that out. <laughs> um, I would advise maybe gloves for this task as well. Um, there could be ants you know, nice shaded area. Um, and then some of the weeds that we have, you'll have to forgive me because my background's not in agriculture, but some of the weeds that we have have like thorns on them and stuff. So I don't know all the names of the weeds. We got a, a long list of weeds here that we're dealing with. <laughs> all right, <laughs> groovy. Mm. So I'm gonna demonstrate how we dig up potatoes. Uh, we planted these particular potatoes between 80 and 90 days ago. 
And um, these right here are the potato vines. You can tell they're starting to die back and that's the indication that it is time to harvest. So what we're gonna do is come in here with our digging fork and we're going to shove it in the ground to the side of the plant. You can see I'm about a foot away from the tomato plant itself because what we really want to avoid is piercing the potato. So we'll come right next to the, the potato. We want to work the, the fork like this just to loosen and lift the potato vine. Just kind of work around it. And then once it's loosened up, you can kind of slowly pull up the vine like this and the potatoes should be attached. I love it. Yeah, so there they are. And then some of them will be left in the soil, so you wanna just dig around to make sure you got them all. Sometimes they'll all pull out, sometimes they won't. So here they are. Here's the potato, and we want to be very gentle with the skin of the potatoes because it's thin and we don't want to um, scar the potato because that can create a soft spot and one bad potato can ruin an entire batch. So once we have these, just kind of break it off the vine here. All sizes, these tiny little ones are also delicious. So take all, all the sizes, lay the plant to the side and move on to the next one. And we'll dig the whole row. Just kind of work it. <laughs> and we dig in dry soil because if you dig potatoes in wet soil, it um, increases the chance of rot. So the soil is pretty dry. It's a perfect day. Yep, look at those. Beautiful. Yep. So, Kayla, what are the, do you know what varieties we'll be harvesting next week? Yep. yep, so once we have all of the potatoes dug up from the ground, we will gently come through and, and place them all in one of our harvesting containers. Um, it's a 6408. I don't know if you've already described the numbers. It's the smallest size container that we have on this farm. And just a single layer, because if you start stacking, they'll start rubbing up against each other and scratching the skin, which is what we don't want. And then they'll be cured for um, a few weeks and sold at our farm stand and donated to people that need them. And we'll have, we don't, we don't harvest multiple varieties at, uh, simultaneously. We go through one variety so that it all gets put into one container or, you know, and we separate that. Then you move on to the next variety in separate containers so that we can keep track, better track of them. Yep. Yes, I am. <laughs> okay, I think, I mean, I think that's everything. Okay. So you want us just to leave the plants there? Or yeah. you want us to remove them once we're done? No, you can leave them in here because Kayla's going to...